I have literally never met a fan. I've never read about a fan. I've never heard about a fan that's challenging this. I came out of my seat when I saw this. I was so excited. And I want to tell you, from two standpoints, first off, Full respect to Anderson Silva. I mean, to look at a younger version of him, to look at, to, at himself, and I, I think he's got to see that and take some real pride in the comparisons to himself that's been made about Israel Adesanya. You know, that, that, that's a big pat on the back. For, for Anderson Silva to come in there at 42 years of age, maybe at a birthday, maybe he's 43 years of age uh, by February when this fight takes place. Look, I think that he does deserve something for that. But the other side of this era, we have seen Anderson De Silva in there with every single style you could imagine. Whenever you have a veteran like Anderson that's been around for a decade plus, you've just seen him with every possible matchup except one. Era, we have never seen Anderson Silva in a match with somebody who is a better stand-up fighter, at least on paper. He has never been put in there with anyone like that. The secret to Anderson's success is he was this Muay Thai, a competitive Muay Thai stand-up kickboxer who all the while was secretly getting a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So when he bust into MMA, he was ready and other guys weren't ready for him. This will be the first time that we've ever seen Anderson perhaps not want to be on his feet, which begs the question, what's he gonna do? Is is Anderson going to go for a double leg takedown? Is Anderson going to force a clinch? We've seen Anderson in the clinch before. We've seen him in wrestling positions before, Errol, but we've never seen him be the one to initiate them. And I think that's very exciting. And can I also say this to you? I have fought Fedor. I have fought John Jones. I have fought Anderson. I always get asked, who was the best? And I could never answer the question. Now that a little time has gone by, I can't answer it. Fedor Milaneko was the most powerful. John Jones was the most uh, dynamic. But without question, the smartest fighter I've ever been in there with is Anderson Silva. He knows how to slow pace. He knows how to control the range. He knows what he's doing. Israel Adesanya can study all the tape he wants on Anderson. And I do believe Izzy should be the favorite of which he is. But I'm telling you now, Anderson has the intellect to make this a different fight than Izzy, you, me, or anybody else is suspecting. That's great insight. And, and for the viewers at home, Chael Sun is the only one who could say that he's fought Fedor, John Jones, and Anderson Silva. So kudos to you on that. I feel, Chael, like I am dealing with a lot of emotions on this program. Round one, I was sad. Round two, very happy for Francis Ngannou. In this one, I, I'm, I'm kind of befuddled. I'm befuddled by the reaction to this fight on Saturday night, and I think it's maybe because we were all gearing up to see the Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz fight, and we're all kind of feeling weird about it. But on Saturday night, I saw a lot of negativity. I saw a lot of hate about this fight. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I missing here? This is, this is an incredible matchup. This is a stroke of genius. Well done, Mick Maynard, UFC matchmaker. This is the fight that we all wanted to see. If it wasn't going to be Israel Adesanya fighting for the belt in Australia, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, this was the fight to make. I mean, is Anderson Silva getting knocked out in his last few fights? No, he's coming off a win. I know it was a while ago. I know he's coming off a suspension, but he wasn't embarrassed. He beat Derek Brunson. Yes, it was controversial, but it's not like the guy is getting smoked in there. The last time he got finished was in 2013 when he broke his own leg against Chris Weidman. Anderson Silva is not Tito Ortiz. He's not Chuck Adele. Why are we all so concerned about his well-being and his health and safety? This is the fight game. And by the way, Chell, you know this as well as anyone. This has been going on for a century in combat sports, not just in combat sports, but in the pro wrestling business as well. This is how it works. Old guy on his way out, youngster comes in, old guy puts, his o puts him over, and then you move on to the next territory. This is the way it's done. And so I don't understand why everyone is all up in arms. This is the fight to make. This is the way that you propel a uh, Israel Adesanya to the next level, or it's the way that Anderson Silva is able to remind everyone, I haven't left, I still got it, I'm still the man. This was 100% the fight to make, and everyone who is all up in arms about it and all nervous about it and all whiny about it, I say calm down, relax, and recognize that this is how it goes in the fight game. This was a smart call. I love the fight. Yeah, listen, I love it, and, and there's no question that what you just said is true. But, Errol, we do see problems with that happening. We do see problems with that old guard represented by Anderson here wanting and being willing to step in there and pass the torch. Look, there was a big period of Anderson Silva's career where he was very selective in his opponents. It was very tough to get him in there with the right guys. He was fighting for main events and world championships, uh, guys uh, that were instantly released from the company because they weren't even good enough for their spot to hold it. Okay, That was a frustrating time for me. That's a lot of where my 
problems with Anderson competitively came from. But we've got a whole new Anderson Silva now. We've got a guy that's stepping in there out of his weight class with Daniel Cormier on 72 hours notice. I mean, we've got a whole different guy. we got a guy putting on the line against Derek Brunson at the time of the fight. Even if Anderson was the favorite, he's still in there with a young, hungry guy and not a whole lot to gain. Now we're seeing him willing to go in there, do the heavy lifting, and yeah, maybe he's going to have to do the job. That's true. But maybe he doesn't. You know, for someone who's under the weather, you're very chatty today. I mean, I'm averaging one answer per round this week. I just want the record shot. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm a team player, but I just, I used to average like two to three. Now it's like one. For more, sign up now for ESPN+. Plus.